What is the very first thing that you play when you pick up your bassoon for the day? Do you play a few scales before you jump into your practicing? Do you noodle around kind of randomly on an instrument before you play? Or do you have some sort of routine, warm-up routine that you do before you jump right into practicing? I believe that having a structured, strategic warm-up routine can be a really important factor in improving your ability as a bassoonist. In this video, I'm going to tell you why having a daily warm-up is really important for you and what it can do for you. I'm going to show you my daily warm-up routine and what everything that I do, exactly how I do it. And I'm also going to show you how you can create your own customized, personalized warm-up routine that works for you. No matter whether you're a beginner and you've been playing for a very short time or you've been playing for years and years. Let's talk about why you should have a warm-up routine as a bassoonist as opposed to just jumping into whatever you're gonna practice for the day. A warm-up does what it is intended to do. It physically and mentally prepares you for what you're gonna be playing that day. It gets you in the mindset to practice and to be focused on certain aspects of your playing. And it also physically warms you up. It warms your embouchure up as you're playing and it warms your fingers up so that you can do what you need to do. I think what's different about how I tend to think about my warm up routine compared to how some other people might think about it is that I view the warm up routine as an opportunity to be a mini technical session and it's an opportunity to isolate areas of your playing that you might be struggling with into sort of a condensed, focused, measurable chunk of time that you can use to improve your playing. You can think about warm-ups kind of like how athletes approach them. You can imagine that somebody who is a pro tennis player is going to have a different approach to their warm-up than somebody who is a pro snowboarder, for example, because they're using different aspects of their body and so they're probably warming up their bodies in different ways before they actually use them. And it's the same idea with bassoon. We have to figure out what we need to do during a particular practice session and what we can do in the warm up to prepare for that practice session. The key to having a good warm up routine is that it is structured and strategic. You have a certain plan and you have certain ways of doing things so that it is measurable and you're hitting fundamental areas in your playing that need improvement. If you take what I'm going to teach you in today's video and incorporate it into your daily playing and really stick with it and measure your progress, I guarantee that within a matter of weeks, you will start to notice changes in your playing where things might become a little bit easier. You might start to hear things a little bit differently because you've, you've trained your ear to start listening for different things. So stick around till the end of this video when I show you how you can make a warm up routine that works for you. I want to tell you a little bit about my warm up routine and how it is structured so that you get an idea of an example of a, a good warm up routine and hopefully it'll give you some ideas for what you can do for your routine. I came up with my warm up routine a number of years ago when I was in my undergraduate program and it came out of a place of I was feeling really overwhelmed with all of the information I was getting from, from teachers and from master classes and places I had attended where there were all these suggested exercises that you can do to improve your playing on the bassoon, but it was always confusing to me because I always wanted to know what should I be working on first and how often should I be working on it? Should I be doing these exercises every day? How long should I be spending on these things? How do I warm myself up right when I start playing so that I'm ready to do my practice session? I had all these questions and I was feeling pretty overwhelmed about my practicing in general. And so I decided to just build a routine that would sort of hit all of these major areas that I was sort of seeing in um, building technique and improving ear training and improving air control and all of these things. And I basically broke my warm up routine down into what I feel are the most important fundamental areas of playing the bassoon. The very first thing that I do when I pick up my bassoon for the day is I sort of just noodle around on the instrument. And what I'm doing is I'm just sort of playing through the most of the range of the instrument, checking certain notes and intervals and things. And I do this for maybe 
30 seconds or so. And it's just to make sure that my instrument works and that my reed is working, that I didn't get a crack in my reed overnight and suddenly it's not working. Um, it's just to make sure that the bassoon works and everything works. <laughs> After I get done sort of noodling around on the bassoon and I make sure my reed works and my bassoon works and I'm ready to start playing, I have a key of the day that I am working in. And the key of the day for me means that I pick a key, let's say C major, just to keep it simple. Let's say I'm working in C major for the day. That means that everything that I play is going to be in C major. And the reason that I pick a key of the day for that particular day is because one of the reasons I was feeling overwhelmed when I started making this warm up routine was, you know, I, there's 12 major scales and there's all these different forms of minor scales and there's a bunch of other different types of scales besides major and minor scales that I could be doing. Um, what, you know, how do I practice all these scales and do all these different exercises that I've been told I should start doing? Um, so I pick a key of the day and that just picks my scale for me. And then I get a sort of deep dive into that key. I cycle through keys of the day by circle of fifths. So if we're using C major as an example today and I'm moving around in my major scales, um, I go up a fifth from C, which is G. And if you were to look at a circle of fifths example, you would see that C is at the top and then G is to the right up a fifth and then you'll see D major and then you'll see A major and so on. Um, so tomorrow I would be in G major. The next day I would be in D major. So that's how I cycle through keys and decide what key I'm focusing on. And then I sort of, it's sort of picked for me and I don't have to do any mental work to figure out what keys I'm playing in. So if I picked C major, the very first thing I'm doing is just some basic up and down scales. And the reason I start with scales is that they're sort of a low barrier to entry. I don't have to put in a lot of mental effort to get started and I, they're pretty simple to play. Usually I set a metronome marking that as a baseline for that scale. So um, if I was just starting out, I would maybe pick 60, quarter note equals 60. I don't have the tuner on, I just have the metronome. You shouldn't be worried about tuning until further in your warm up routine, until your instrument has warmed up and you have warmed up a little bit more because tuning changes as your instrument warms up. So I just have the metronome on, I have it at quarter note equal 60. And then if I'm doing a C major scale, I'm going to do just up and down C major scale in quarter notes. So it's going to be really slow. <laughs> If you're working in C major, you might only be in a one octave or a two octave C major scale, and that's fine. Just if, work with whatever scales you can do. So I do a three octave major scale in quarter notes. Then I have that metronome still running, and I do the three octave scale in eighth notes. <laughs> And then I do the three octave scale in triplets. And then I do the three octave scale in sixteenth notes. Usually I keep going, depending on the day, um, I will do quintuplets and sextuplets as well.
I have tried to do seven tuplets before, um, but I find that I can only do seven tuplets on a high energy day when I have a lot of focus, um, because those are difficult. Um, but you might notice the pattern here is that I'm starting with a really slow, basic, I can easily do quarter notes, and then I build it up to quarter, eighth notes, triplets, 16th notes. And this is a way to practice up, just regular up and down scales um, so that you're you're just practicing them in different ways you're doing different rhythms and by doing those different rhythms you are practicing things you are putting the emphasis on different notes in the scale so for example when you're doing triplets versus 16th notes different notes in the scale are going to get different emphasis because you're changing the rhythmic value. And that's helpful because that just builds your scale technique when you're changing it up um, rather than just doing all eighth notes or all 16th notes all the time. So after I've gone through that whole series of uh, rhythms for my scale, and I should also mention that I, I tend to keep these just all slurred at this point. I'm not worried about um, tonguing at this point because again, I'm trying to keep sort of a low barrier to entry for my warm up, trying to keep it simple. Slurred scales are easier in general for me at least. Um, so I like to start with those right at the beginning of my warm up. And then later on in the warm up, I get into more articulations. So after I've done the up and down scale, I do that arpeggio. So since C major is the key of the day, I do a C major arpeggio. And the way that I do arpeggios is I still have that metronome running and I start on the root of the scale on the lowest note on the instrument. So if I'm in C major and I can play a low C on the bassoon, maybe you're not super comfortable with a low C on the bassoon. So you might start on, at the C in the bass clef staff, but I start on the low C in the bassoon and then I go all the way up through to the high C, sometimes to the high E, which is the highest sort of standard note uh, in the bassoon range if, if I feel like my reed can handle it. Um, but I go up to the highest note in the bassoon range in that particular arpeggio. Um, so to give you a better example of this, if I was in G major, for example, I would start on the lowest G on the bassoon, which is the G at the bottom of the bass clef staff. I would cycle through the G major arpeggio, G, B, D, G, B, D, and then I would play the highest note on in the bassoon register that is in the G major arpeggio, which is a D. Uh, that's the highest note that you can play on the bassoon in the G major arpeggio. So the D, high D on the bassoon is gonna be my highest note. And then I'm gonna go back down and a low B is the lowest note in the G major arpeggio on the bassoon. And then I'm gonna end up on back on the G. So it doesn't always end up that G or the root of the note is always on a nice, easy downbeat, but I like to practice arpeggios and scales sometimes too throughout the entire range of the instrument and not just within a neat little start on the root, end on the root section. When I'm playing the bassoon in real life, there are certainly times where I might encounter that arpeggio that goes up to the high D, or I might encounter the arpeggio that goes to the low B. So I use G major because that's a little bit less straightforward than C major because C, basically it's C to C in terms of the lowest note in the C major arpeggio to the highest note in the C major arpeggio. With the arpeggios, after I've played the scales, I do the same sort of thing. I start actually with eighth notes, and then I play the arpeggio in triplets. And then I play the arpeggio in sixteenth notes. It's the same idea where I'm sort of working up to the 16th note arpeggio as my goal. And I'm also in the process of working up to it. I'm practicing sort of different ways of playing the arpeggio. So it's just improving how my arpeggio is being played. I should also take a moment and say 
there are many times, especially when I get into keys that aren't as comfortable on the bassoon or there's weird fingering combinations, I should say that I always take time to fix any issues in my warm up routine. You should take some time, maybe just a couple minutes, just to sort of work that out and isolate the part of the scale or the part of the arpeggio that wasn't clean. I don't necessarily beat it to death and, and try to get it absolutely perfect in my warm up routine, but I do take the time to try and fix things. So after I've done my 16th note arpeggios, I go to the dominant of C major, which is G major, and I play the dominant arpeggios. So this is getting into music theory. If, if, the, if what I've just told you is like a foreign language and you have no clue what I'm talking about, just disregard it because it doesn't, it's not that important. But I do the dominant um, arpeggio leading back to my home base key of C because a lot of times in music, that's exactly what happens. We're playing in the dominant key and then we return to the home key, which in this case is C. So a G7 or G dominant uh, chord is actually G, B, D, which is the, that's the triad of G major. Then you add the flat seven of <laughs> G major. So the, the seventh note of the G major scale is F sharp we flat it by a half step. So that's F natural. So the full G dominant uh, seven chord of C major is G, B, D, F natural. And so I do that arpeggio, same idea as the C major arpeggio. And then when I finally get to the 16th notes of the G dominant seven, uh, I then immediately go back into C major. So in my arpeggios, I'm practicing the relationship between the dominant and the tonic. And you could go, you know, if you're at this point where this makes a lot of sense to you and you're like, yeah, I totally do that. Um, you could even do more advanced chord progressions. You could start at the tom tonic, go through a number of chord progressions, and then do the five to one or the dominant to tonic um, chord relationship. So. Again, if all of that is super complicated, just don't worry about it. I'm just telling you what I do so you get you get a sense of where you can go with this warm-up routine and maybe it gives you some ideas for how, what you can do. Once I've done sort of the straight up scales and arpeggios of that particular key of the day, I do one more scale exercise that is different um, and gets into some different aspects of playing um, that are called fluency scales. And I really like fluency scales because you are going back and forth um, on the same key and you're really getting, you're really diving deep into that particular scale or that particular key. And it's a nice way to also practice different articulations and different dynamic levels. My first set of fluency scales is all slurred and all forte. And then the second set of fluency scales is I slur four notes at a time. So now I'm getting into some different articulations. When I'm going up in the fluency scale, I'm all forte. And then when I come down, I am diminuendo, diminuendoing over the course of that exercise down to piano. The next one, I, I'm breaking it down into smaller articulations. So I'm slurring three, tongue one. Slurring three, tongue one for this set. On the way up, I'm starting where I left off at piano 
and I am crescendoing up, diminuendo down when I'm coming down. <laughs> And I keep going until I have um, slur two, tongue two, and then I have slur two, tongue six, and I, I'm working through different dynamics. I'm not going to go into detail on the fluency scales in particular because not everybody is ready to do that type of exercise, but the idea is that in that exercise I'm practicing different dynamic levels I'm, and I'm practicing different articulations in addition to continuing to improve my finger um, flexibility, my finger fluency in these scales. I just finished the scale portion of my warm-up routine and that will take me, kind of depends on the day, but uh, 15, 20 minutes maybe especially if I'm going back and fixing things in the scales that didn't go well, that's going to take longer. There are some days where um, I will say if I'm not having a great day or low energy or something like that, I, I'm not going to spend as much time fixing my scales because I'm just not in that mindset. You have to be sort of aware of your mental state and how you feel. If you're in a bad mood or you're not, you're feeling kind of under the weather or something, um, you're not going to be as productive and nitty gritty with your practicing and your warm up routine as on a day where you're high energy, you're feeling great, you can dive into things. So you can fluctuate the warm, the routine based on how you feel. The scales for me and the scales and the arpeggios for me are sort of low barrier to entry. They just get me playing, they get my fingers moving. I start working on some articulations and dynamics. And by this point, I'm, I'm fairly warmed up. Um, but I haven't done anything where I'm focusing on pitch and stability and control in my playing. And that's where my least favorite part of my warm up routine comes in, and that is long tones. You might have heard of long tones before, and they can mean a lot of different things. Um, sort of the traditional way of thinking of long tones is that you're sustaining one pitch over a certain period of time and oftentimes you're you're changing the dynamic level and you have a tuner on at this point and you're watching to make sure that your pitch stays the same throughout that entire note. And the idea is that you are listening to what you're playing, making sure the pitch doesn't doesn't change, and you're memorizing how it feels to play that note in tune with a good sound at different dynamic levels. That's kind of the basic approach to long tones. For me, I do the Hertzberg long tones and I really like them. Um, and I'm gonna link down in the video description where you can find a PDF of the Hertzberg long tones. And I believe there's actually some instruction on that PDF too as how you're supposed to do them. But it's a set of five different long tones. And what I like about them is you're not, it's not just about holding a note and seeing um, that you're cha not changing the pitch. There's different rhythmic values to the long tones. Um, one of the exercises you're playing quarter notes repeated and you're doing things where you play really softly for a half note and then really loud for, for another half note. <laughs> really force you to pay attention to what is happening at your softest register as well as what's happening at your loudest register and I think the most important part of these long tones that I like is that they show you what is happening when you tongue the note. A really common thing that happens when you tongue notes on the bassoon is that the pitch goes up right at the beginning of the note and then it settles. And we don't often realize that, but if you sit and 
play a series of continuous quarter notes with a tuner, you'll notice if you're just sort of playing regularly that the pitch goes up each time that you re-articulate the note. So you have to figure out how to articulate the notes without making the pitch go up. That's what these long tones teach you as well as what what are what you should be doing in the extremes of your playing. You're going to notice that there's different things that you have to do with your air and your embouchure to be able to play the same note in tune with a good sound at pianissimo volume and in tune with a good sound at a fortissimo volume. And that's sort of what these long tones focus on. There are lots of other long tone exercises out there. You could come up with your own long tone exercises. It doesn't have to be a super structured thing. Um, there's a long tone exercise that I've come across before where you close your eyes, you play a note, and you have your tuner on, and then you open your eyes, and then you check with the tuner to see if the note that you were playing was in tune. And I like that be that particular exercise because you aren't tuning with your eyes, it's forcing you to tune with your ears. And that's kind of a general thing to think about in long tones is not only are you making sure that you are in tune, on green, you, you need to make sure that you can hear what you're playing. So it's, it's important to sort of try to internalize with your ear what you're doing. And with the Hertzberg long, long tones, there's basically two rules. You play in tune and in time. So you'll have a, a metronome going. I always have mine going at 60. And again, making sure that um, you're, even though you're visually seeing that you're on green, you can hear the changes that are happening. So if you hear that the pitch is rising when you re-articulate notes, make sure that you hear it too, not just see it on the tuner. And as a reminder, with long tones because I have a key of the day and in the example I've been using it's C major I'm gonna play all my long tones on C's and so for me I can play four different C's on the bassoon there's and that's how many C's there are in the standard register you may not be able to play the highest C on the bassoon or the lowest C on the bassoon yet you may only be able to play two C's so but I'm just playing all the C's that I can play. And so I will do each of the five exercises. I'll do each of them four times. And usually I start with the lowest register on the bassoon. That's sometimes the hardest. And then I work my way up to the highest register or the highest C in this instance. So I'm doing, spending a lot of time on long tones. Long tones are also a great way to build lung capacity, air capacity because they force you to hold a note over a long period of time and to also be changing the dynamic level. So you learn that the louder you play, the, the sooner that your air is gonna be running out and the softer you play, the usually the longer you can sustain that note. When you start to understand the limits of your playing, that really goes into your practicing and your performing across the board because you're starting to understand the limits of what your lungs can do. So the final part of my warm-up routine includes double tonguing and single tonguing exercises. Now again, this is my warm-up routine. I do not expect um, everyone watching to be able to or to want to do exactly my warm-up routine. I'm just showing you what I do so you have an example. So for me, it's really important that these are at the end of my warm-up as opposed to the beginning of my warm-up for a couple of reasons. Double and single tonguing exercises are my favorite type of exercises. I really enjoy them and I enjoy trying to improve um, my ability, at, particularly at single tonguing. Another reason why it's here is because double tonguing in particular for me has been a weaker skill that I've had to to work on. It took me a long time to get the hang of double tonguing and to get where I felt like I could do it. And if you don't know what double tonguing is, it is a technique that you do with your tonguing so that you can tongue much faster than what you can do just normal, what we call single tonguing. And 
if you are a beginner or even an intermediate player, I, I do not recommend that you try out double tonguing unless you're working with a teacher or um, you're well advanced in your bassoon studies and are, are continuing to work on it. But um, for me, double tonguing was something that was a weakness of mine and I knew I had to work on every day to build it up. And so I incorporated it into my warm up routine because I wanted it to become less scary and I wanted to be able to do it. It used to be for me that if there was something in a piece of music that needed to be double tongued, I wouldn't have done it because I would have been scared to do it. But now I know that I can do it because it's become just a daily habit. It's part of my warm up routine. I do it all the time. I've practiced it and now I'm not scared of it anymore and I'm continuing to improve it. I also put single tonguing exercises at the very end. This is just a quick note. If you're doing tonguing exercises and you're working on double tonguing, sing your single tongue tends to suffer when you practice your double tongue a lot because you're, do you're doing different tongue motions and you sort of get used to it. So whenever you're working on your double tongue, you wanna make sure that you're also working on your single tongue concurrently so that you don't lose your single tongue ability as you're building your double tongue ability. I also really like single tonguing exercises. And if you want to know more about tonguing in general and articulation, I do have an articulation video that I'll link above. And I show you in that video, my go-to single tonguing exercise. And that is the exercise that I do at the end of my warm up routine, because it's my favorite and it's sort of a reward. And again, because I'm picking, I've had a key of the day um, in my single tonguing, I typically will play on that particular note. Although for single tonguing, I don't necessarily play in the very low register and the very upper register. I, I tend to stick in the staff. I'm focused mainly on speed. So we just went over my warm up routine, what I do every day. And just keep in mind that I've been developing this warm up routine for a number of years and I've tailored it to fit my needs and what I need to work on. So if some of it seemed a little overwhelming or not like it's not going to work for you, that's completely normal. What I'm going to tell you next is how to develop your own personalized, customized warm up routine for you that will work for where you're at. It doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or you've been playing bassoon for many, many years. Um, having a good warm up routine is is going to help you in a lot of ways. So in essence, my warm up routine could have been broken down into the following elements. I started with the scales and arpeggios, which is again, the low barrier to entry, finger fluency, technical fluency, just sort of getting started, getting warmed up on the bassoon. So start with something like that low barrier to entry. After my scales and arpeggios, I moved to long tones, they're the least favorite part of my warm up and sometimes they're the most difficult because they require a lot of focus. And so those are in the middle of my warm up routine after I've already started playing. And then I ended with sort of my favorite types of exercises where the tonguing exercises and that was sort of my reward for getting through the scales and the long tones. And I encourage you to follow that similar structure. It's important to not just consider what you physically need to be able to do on the bassoon. It's important to consider your mental state as you're warming up on the bassoon. And you need to, con you need to start with something that's easy. You can just get going. And then you need to end with something that's going to be rewarding. So pick your favorite exercise that you like to do. Maybe scales are your favorite thing that you like to do. And if that was at the end of your warm up routine, you would want to get through most of it to get to that point. Or maybe there's a particular specific exercise that you like that just feels good to play. Put that at the end of the of the routine, but put the most difficult thing in the middle, which I, I think for most of us is probably long tones. That's a good thing to put in the middle because you've warmed up a little bit. And so your instrument is warm, you are warm, um, and then you can focus on pitch. So some type of long tone exercise in the middle. You do not have to do tonguing exercises like I do. I recommend them if you're an, a more advanced player and you're trying to improve your tonguing speed. If you've been told that you need to be able to tongue faster or you feel like you come across music that you, you can't tongue fast enough, 
Um, that's where I would recommend starting to do tonguing exercises. But if you're a beginner, you don't need to worry about that. If you're a beginner and say the only scale that you know is a one octave B flat major scale, start with that, play that one octave major scale up and down, maybe play a couple different articulations with it and have the metronome going. I would recommend starting with 60 or even slower and start with that quarter notes, then eighth notes, then maybe you can get to triplets or whatever you can do and change the articulation, change the rhythm, and so that you've made a little bit of an exercise out of it. So maybe you spend maybe five minutes on that one scale. Then as you get better and you learn more scales, then you start incorporating those into your warm-up routine. So maybe you only know three different scales right now. Maybe you only know B flat major, F major, and E flat major. Maybe those are the only scales you know right now. That's completely fine. One day, maybe pick B flat major and do some exercises on it. The next day, maybe pick E flat major. The next day, maybe pick F major. And maybe the, you know, on a day that you're feeling really good and you, you have, you know, good energy and you're willing to focus, then maybe venture out into a scale that you don't know and use your warm up to learn that new scale. You can also make up your own exercises for your warm up routine as well. A lot of my scale exercise things I've picked and chose from other exercises that I liked and I sort of made them my own thing. And I encourage you to do the same. You can make up your own exercises, especially if you don't have a book or anything to work out of and make exercises that will work for you. And it's important to do things that are both relatively simple for you to do that don't take a lot of work to incorporate things that are a little bit difficult and might require some energy and to do things that are a little bit more difficult, things that you are gonna take a lot more work. Try to think about your mental state throughout your warm-up routine as well as what you need to do physically. I wanna take a little bit of time to talk about how my warm-up routine fits in my overall life and practice and how you can sort of think of your warm-up routine. So on average, my warm-up routine can take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the key. If I'm in a difficult key, it's gonna take longer because I'm gonna spend more time working on that key. But there are a lot of days where I don't have 45 minutes to an hour to spend on my full warm-up. So I will choose a condensed version of that warm-up, maybe 10 minutes. I just play one scale up and down. I may not hit long tones that day. Um, you know, if I don't have time to sit with a tuner and maybe I do one round of a single tonguing exercise and that might just be a condensed 10 minute warm up, but I'm still taking elements of my full warm up. And when I was a student, when I was a full time student doing a lot of practicing and, and trying to get better at the bassoon specifically, and I wasn't doing as much as I am now, I was doing that full warm up every day. So if you're a student and you have the time, you should be spending probably more time on your warm up. Um, whereas right now, these days, some days I will do a full warm up, especially if I have the time. And other days I've got 20 other things that I've got to work on. So I'll condense my warm up routine. Or maybe I don't have time. Maybe I have an early morning performance and I don't have time to warm up a bunch before that. So I'll do a condensed warm up. So as you're building your warm up routine, think about ways that you can condense it down and you can customize it, tailor it to what you've got going on in your life at any given time. If you think of your warm up routine as something that's constantly fluid, it's constantly evolving and changing, um, that will help you stick with it. There are certainly times in my warm up routine where I get really bored of what I'm playing and I might swap in a different scale exercise or I might swap in a different long tone exercise or I might do something different altogether because I'm kind of bored with it. And another important element of all of my of my warm up and I encourage you to do the same is that everything about my warm up is trackable and measurable. I don't do this as much anymore because what I'm needing to do in my practicing is different than what it used to be. But when I was in school, full-time student needing to practice a lot, I had a practice log, which I'll link down to in, in the video description, um, a copy of my practice log 
so you can either use it or, or build something similar to it. In this practice log, I was writing down what key I did that day and any tempo markings that I did for the key that day, especially when it comes to like the tonguing exercises and things where I'm trying to improve my speed. I will keep track of what my tempos were and I might even make any notes like um, something was difficult and I need more work on it or I'll, I'll track it and take notes on it. I really encourage you to do the same thing, not just for your warm up routine, but for your practicing in general is write down what you practice and any notes that you had about it or maybe like you didn't have time to get to this this time, so tomorrow you need to work on that. So I have some action steps that I want you to take after watching this video. So your first thing to do is to create a warm-up routine, put it on paper, and sort of outline a warm-up routine similar to mine that will work for you based on what you're doing, what you're working on, what your level is, and stick to it and find a way to make that warm-up routine trackable, whether you're using a practice log like mine or using an app on your phone or whatever you're doing or writing on a piece of paper what you're working on, track and measure what you're working on in that warm-up routine over time. If you stick with a solid warm-up routine, remember a structured strategic warm-up routine, you will start to notice improvements in your playing within a matter of weeks. This is what happened to me when I started work doing a regular warm up routine and sticking with it and tracking it is I started to notice that certain things became easier and I, I felt like my ear improved because I could start to hear pitch differently and I felt like certain things became easier on the bassoon because I was working things in my fingers. Do your warm up routine say at least five days a week over the course of about three weeks or so. If you stick with that warm up routine, by the end of those first few weeks, you'll start to notice improvements in your playing. It's also important to make sure that your warm up routine includes element, elements of a number of fundamentals in bassoon playing. So you'll notice that my warm up routine, I was working on dynamics, I was working on articulation, I was working on pitch, and not just hearing pitch, but also learning how to translate what I wanted to hear, what I was hearing into what I was playing. That takes time too. And I incorporated tonguing, which is something that we have to do as bassoonists. So I'm incorporating all these fundamental aspects of, of my playing into my warm up routine. And what you're doing in your warm up routine is, is you're preparing yourself for the practice session. For me, when I do my full 45 minute warm up routine, at the end of that warm up routine, what I love about it is that I'm able to play anything. I'm completely warmed up. My brain is warmed up. I can do anything that I want to play and I'm ready to go. The other nice thing about it is it's a full warm up routine that say when I have a performance on a particular day and I, I don't want to practice a lot before that performance, I can do my warm up routine. And that's, that's all I need to do to be ready for the performance. I don't feel like I need to practice or, or do anything special. I just have to do my warm up routine and I'm ready to go for pretty much anything. You want your warm up routine to get you to that point where by, at the end of it, you can, you're at your peak, you're at your top. You can play anything at the end of your warm up routine. So make a warm up routine that works for you and where you're at based on what you can do find a way to track it and start tracking it and then stick with it on a regular basis every day that you play your bassoon. Do this warm up routine, stick with it even on the days that you don't want to because there will be many days that you don't want to do the warm up routine. Stick with it and then over time you will start to notice noticeable changes in your playing. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and let me know down in the comments, how are you gonna build your warm, warm up routine? Or how are you gonna take a warm up routine that you currently have and make it better? What sort of steps are you taking to make a warm up routine?